I've been playing around with ChatGPT recently and I've been thinking of ways that it can generally improve our lives and I've found some really great uses for it personally. But I was also thinking, okay, so how can graduate students, PhD students use ChatGPT to help them finish their program faster? And so I was playing around with ChatGPT just to test some of the ideas that I had and yes, I, I really wanted to make this video to share those with you. Hey there, PhD friend. I'm Dr. Gertrude Nontra. I have a PhD in microbiology and immunology, and I make these videos for you. So the first way that I see ChatGPT being super useful to you as a PhD student is to use ChatGPT to simplify complex topics. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was in grad school, I definitely came across a lot of complex topics and sometimes it would take me days of reading and reading and reading all over again just to try to understand. But one of the things that you can use ChatGPT to do is you could type in or explain this to me like I'm a fifth grader or sixth grader or something like that. And I find that, and this I, I, I learned this concept when I was teaching, I found that whenever you're able to simplify a complex topic for students or for yourself if you're studying, you're able to remember it better no matter how complex complex that concept is, if you're able to break it down and explain it at a level that perhaps a fifth grader or sixth grader could understand, it helps you remember it's better. That's how I remember most of my facts is just try to break it down to the simplest level possible and then understand it. And I realized that if you go into chat GPT, you could type in a topic and it could explain it for you. So with an example that I tried, I actually typed in my PhD dissertation topic, which was on the curly amyloid, the bacterial amyloid. So I asked chat GPT, give me a simplified explanation of what the bacterial amyloid curly is and why it's important. And it gave me this really nice summary of what curly was and why it's important, right? And so you can definitely take a complex topic, put it in chat GPT and it can spit out and a summary for you so that you have that basic understanding upon which you can build those complex topics. The second useful thing I found was using ChatGPT to find what some of the important scholarly contributions to your specific field are, right? Or the papers that have been pivotal in that particular field. And so to do that, I went to my PhD dissertation topic again and I asked ChatGPT, what are some of the top papers that have been written about curly amyloid fibers? And it gave me a list of five papers and actually having been in the field, in that particular field for almost six years, these are some of the top papers about curly amyloid fibrils. And so I was like so excited to see that it gave a really accurate result when it came to that. And so perhaps in your field too, you can ask ChatGPT to give you some of the top papers in that field, especially if you're just starting out. And then what I, I find this being useful for is once you have that, you can, you know, bookmark them, you can read them, you can make them sort of like, I remember when I was doing my PhD, there were specific papers that were sort of like guideposts for me because I kept on going back to them and referring to them. And so with something like this, you can go back, read these papers, make your notes, maybe make them your guiding posts, your sort of pillar throughout your research. You could also use ChatGPT to summarize articles. So I found that ChatGPT doesn't do this very well yet, but I tried it, right? And so, and so what I did was take one of my papers from my postdoc. I said, provide a summary of the article, TLR activation alters bone marrow derived macrophage differentiation. And it gave me a summary. Now it was really slow when it was spitting out this summary. I noticed that. So it looks like the AI was like trying to probably like scan the paper. Um, it gave me a summary. It wasn't, I don't think it was a great summary, but it was a good summary nonetheless. Um, because the paper is a little bit more nuanced than that. But over here, it just gives like a very basic 
surface level summary of the paper so then you know in that case if you wanted to go back and read that paper that would be super helpful um i always find i've done a, a video on this channel where i talked about how to how you can read papers or make reading papers easier and oh, i always found that reading the abstract and then reading the conclusions were super helpful to me for getting a good summary but perhaps this could be another way in which you Take a paper that looks really long and complex and say, okay, chat GPT, provide me with a summary of this paper so that I have an idea of what it is before I go in and like, you know, try to read the paper. If you've been on this channel long enough, then you know, you know that I'm a big advocate for using LinkedIn as a networking tool to help you get ahead with your career. LinkedIn has been such a blessing for me. It's helped me get so much more than just a career, speaking engagements, opportunities to be interviewed on podcasts, opportunities to collaborate. Like there've been so many opportunities to do things just from being on LinkedIn, right? And so writing the right LinkedIn profile is always going to be really important. So one of the things you can do is you can tell ChatGPT some of your, you know, what you've accomplished up to this point and ask ChatGPT to write a profile for you that you can put on LinkedIn. And here's an example of what ChatGPT gave me when I asked it to write um, a, a LinkedIn profile based on some of the information I gave it. I said, I have a PhD in microbiology and immunology. I started a YouTube channel called The Bull PhD, which helps graduate students and early career PhDs navigate careers outside of academia. I currently work as a medical writer at Thermo Fisher Scientific, write a professional yet friendly bio for LinkedIn. And I got this result right here. Uh, I, I was in love with it. I liked it. I almost was like, oh, I want to take that and tweak it a little bit and put it in, in my LinkedIn profile. But I thought it was great. Um, and you can do something similar, right? you can do something similar now of course you want to make sure that you are reading through this and I, I feel like with all the the ai technologies that are coming out they are doing some really great things but it's really important that as it creates these things for you if you're going to use them personally like in any published work or anything it's absolutely important for you to go in do your own editing do your own reading these tools are supposed to be assistants they're supposed to help us get our work done faster they're not supposed to replace us right um and yes they are going definitely you know the way things are going i feel like there's certain parts of our jobs that could be replaced by ai but i have found that using ai this way can just makes you more efficient so let it help you be more efficient. This example was like so ex exciting for me because it's like, wow, if, if you don't know what to write for your LinkedIn profile, you could come in here, put stuff in here and then, you know, get it moving. And following up on this, right? When you're writing your LinkedIn profile, I'm always telling people that put in the kind of words that you want people to see or recruiters to see that will make them hire you. So if you know you want a job in medical affairs or medical communications or in UX research or whatever, then you will maybe want to tell ChatGPT, okay, I have all these, you know, qualifications, but I also want, and I also want to um, be a UX researcher. So write a LinkedIn profile that's optimized for somebody that wants a UX researcher job. Do you see how you could be going in like all kinds of directions with this? I hope so. I hope so. Anyway, let's move on. Use ChatGPT to draft emails that you're sending for various reasons, okay? So maybe you want to send emails to a potential PhD advisor. Maybe you want to send an email to somebody that's doing work in your field that you want to collaborate with. Maybe you're sending emails for a job. Whatever you're sending emails for, I feel like ChatGPT can be a really good tool to help you draft that email. So this is an example of what I did with ChatGPT. I went into ChatGPT and I said, help me draft an email to a professor. I would like to become my PhD advisor. The professor has research interests in CAR T and NK cell therapy. She has published papers in Nature and Cell. I have a bachelor's degree in biology and have worked in a lab for six months before applying to graduate school. I want my potential advisor to see that I am a motivated student who can hit the ground running once I join the lab. And over here, as you can see, 
um, there is a draft of an email, right? And so again, you could take this email, you know, take the parts of it that look awkward out, you know, and then put your own words in, but this could be a really good starter for you to like write that really great email that catches the attention of that potential advisor. So again, this is really exciting for me to test out and to like do for you guys. So let me know if you liked this video, if you would like me to make more of these types of videos around AI in your career, let me know, let me know in the comments below.